Muhammad Asad pronounced Mohammed Azad listen Arabic MEHMD Azd Muhammad Asad Urdu MEHMD Azd born Leopold Weiss the 12th of July 1900 to the 20th of February 1992 was a Jewish born Austro-Hungarian Pakistani ambassador Muslim journalist traveler writer linguist thinker political theorist diplomat and Islamic scholar Assad was one of the most influential European Muslims of the 20th century. By the age of 13, young Weiss had acquired a passing fluency in Hebrew and Aramaic, other than his native languages German and Polish. By his mid 20s, he could read and write in English, French, Persian, and Arabic. In Mandatory Palestine, Weiss engaged in arguments with Zionist leaders like Chaim Weizmann, voicing his reservations about some aspects of the Zionist movement. After traveling across the Arab world as a journalist, he converted to Sunni Islam in 1926 and chose for himself the Muslim name, Muhammad Assad. Assad being the Arabic rendition of his root name Leo. Lion. During his stay in Saudi Arabia, he spent time with Bedouin and enjoyed the close company of Ibn Saud the founder of modern Saudi Arabia. He also carried out a secret mission for Ibn Saud to trace the sources of funding for the Ikhwan revolt. Due to these activities, he was dubbed in a Haaretz article as Leopold of Arabia, hinting similarity of his activities to those of Lawrence of Arabia. On his visit to India, Assad became friends with Muslim poet philosopher Muhammad Iqbal, who persuaded him to abandon his eastward travels and help elucidate the intellectual premises of the future Islamic State. He also spent five years in internment by the British government at the outbreak of World War II. On 14 August 1947, Assad received Pakistani citizenship and later served at several bureaucratic and diplomatic positions including the Director of Department of Islamic Reconstruction, Deputy Secretary Middle East Division in the Foreign Ministry of Pakistan and Pakistan's envoy to the United Nations. In the West, Assad rose to prominence as a writer with his best-selling autobiography, The Road to Mecca. Later, after 17 years of scholarly research, he published his magnum opus, The Message of the Quran, an English translation and commentary of the Quran. The book, along with the translations of Pikthal and Yusuf Ali, is regarded as one of the most influential translations of the modern era. An ardent proponent of i-jihad and rationality in interpreting religious texts, he dedicated his works to people who think. In 2008, the entrance square to the UN office in Vienna was named Mohammed Assad Platz in commemoration of his work as a religious bridge builder. Assad has been described by his biographers as Europe's gift to Islam and a mediator between Islam and the West. Topic: <laughs> Personal life. Topic. Background Leopold Weiss was born on 2 July 1900 to a Jewish family in Lemberg, Galicia, then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire which is currently the city of Lviv, Ukraine. Weiss was a descendant of a long line of Jewish rabbis, however, his father, Akiva Weiss, broke from tradition and became a lawyer. Leopold received a religious education and was proficient in Hebrew from an early age, as well as familiar with Aramaic. He studied the Jewish Bible or Tanakh, the text and commentaries of the Talmud, the Mishnah and Gemara, also delving into the intricacies of biblical exegesis and the Targum. At the age of 14 he escaped school and joined the Austrian army under a false name. After a week or so, his father traced him with the help of the police, and he was escorted back to Vienna. Topic. Years in Wilderness 1920 After abandoning university in Vienna, Weiss drifted aimlessly around 1920s Germany, working briefly for the expressionist film director Fritz Lang F. W. Murnau, according to The Road to Mecca. By his own account, after selling a jointly written film script, he splurged the windfall on a wild party at an expensive Berlin restaurant, in the spirit of the times. While working as a telephone operator for an American news agency in Berlin, Weiss obtained a coveted interview with Russian author Maxim Gorky's wife, his first published piece of journalism, after simply ringing up her hotel room. Topic: 
Stay in Middle East 1922 In 1922 Weiss moved to the British Mandate of Palestine, staying in Jerusalem at the house of his maternal uncle Dorian Feigenbaum at his invitation. Feigenbaum was a psychoanalyst, a disciple of Freud, and later founded the Psychoanalytic Quarterly. <laughs> Foreign correspondent for Frankfurter Zeitung He picked up work as a stringer for the German newspaper Frankfurter Zeitung, one of the most prestigious newspapers of Germany and Europe, selling articles on a freelance basis. His pieces were noteworthy for their understanding of Arab fears and grievances against the Zionist project. He published a small book on the subject in 1924, and this so inspired the confidence of the Frankfurter Zeitung that it commissioned him to travel more widely still, to collect information for a full-scale book. Weiss made the trip, which lasted two years. Topic: <inaudible> Conversion to Islam, 1926. To gain closer assignments in the Arabic world, Weiss developed an ever-deepening engagement with Islam. This led to his religious conversion in 1926 in Berlin and adopting an Arabic name, Muhammad Assad. Assad spoke of Islam. Islam appears to me like a perfect work of architecture. All its parts are harmoniously conceived to complement and support each other, nothing is superfluous and nothing lacking, and the result is a structure of absolute balance and solid composure." Magazine Saudi Aramco World in a 2002 essay described his journey to conversion in these words, two roads diverged in Berlin in the 1920s, a well-worn one to the west, the other, rarely traveled, to the east. Leopold Weiss, a gifted young writer, traveler and linguist with a thorough knowledge of the Bible and the Talmud and with deep roots in European culture, took the road eastward to Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Years in Arabia 1927 After his conversion to Islam, Assad moved to Saudi Arabia making a journey by camel across the Arabian desert, from Tama to Mecca. He stayed there for nearly six years during which he made five pilgrimages. Alongside, he started writing essays for the Swiss newspaper Neue Zürcher Zeitung, and continued to do so till 1934. <laughs> Ibn Saud's confidant and Bolshevik allegations After the sudden death of his wife Elsa, Assad stayed on in Mecca where, in a chance encounter in the Grand Mosque's library, he met Prince Faisal. On Faisal's invitation, Assad met King Abdulaziz founder of modern Saudi Arabia. The meeting led to almost daily audiences with the king, who quickly came to appreciate Assad's knowledge, keen mind and spiritual depth. Ibn Saud allowed Assad to visit the Najd region in the king's company, which was forbidden to foreigners at that time. In late 1928, an Iraqi named Abdallah Damluji, who had been an advisor to Ibn Saud, submitted a report to the British on Bolshevik and Soviet penetration of the Hiyas. In this report, after highlighting Assad's activities in Arabia, Damluji alleged that Assad had connections with Bolsheviks. What is the real mission which makes him endure the greatest discomforts and the worst conditions of life? On what basis rests the close intimacy between him and Sheikh Yusuf Yassin, secretary to the king and editor of the official newspaper Um al Qura? Is there some connection between von Weiss and the Bolshevik consulate in Jidda? Topic: Ikhwan Rebellion. According to Assad, he did finally become a secret agent of sorts. Ibn Saud sent him on a secret mission to Kuwait in 1929, to trace the sources of financial and military assistance being provided to Faisal al-Daesh, an Ikhwan leader turned rebel against Ibn Saud's rule. Assad, after traveling day and night through the desert without lighting fire, reached Kuwait to collect first-hand evidence. He concluded that the British were providing arms and money to add Daesh to weaken Ibn Saud for the purpose of securing a land route to India a railroad from Haifa to Basra ultimately connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Indian subcontinent. Topic: 
Years in British India and Pakistan, 1932 to 1952. Topic: Meeting Iqbal and visiting Kashmir. Assad left Arabia and came to British India in 1932 where he met South Asia's premier Muslim poet, philosopher and thinker Muhammad Iqbal. Iqbal had proposed the idea of an independent Muslim state in India, which later became Pakistan. Iqbal persuaded Assad to stay on in British India and help the Muslims of India establish their separate Muslim state. Iqbal introduced Assad to Chaudhry Niaz Ali Khan, a philanthropist and agriculturalist, who, on the advice of Muhammad Iqbal, established the Dar ul Islam Trust Institutes in Pathankot, India and Jauharabad, Pakistan. Assad stayed on in British India and worked with both Muhammad Iqbal and Chaudhry Niaz Ali Khan. Allama Iqbal encouraged Assad to translate Sahih al-Bukhari in English for the first time in history. Assad responded positively and started making the arrangements for his translation. In order to find a place serene enough to stimulate his intellectual and spiritual cerebration, he arrived in Kashmir during the summer of 1934. There, he met Mirwais Muli Yusuf who became his close friend. While working enthusiastically on his translation, he also set up his own printing press in Srinagar. The first two chapters of his translation were printed in Srinagar. Assad mentions in his book Home Coming of the Heart that he had a special relationship with Kashmir and that he felt very sad when he left it. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Internment as enemy alien 1939 to 1945. When the Second World War broke out in 1939, Assad's parents were arrested and subsequently murdered by the Nazis. Assad himself was arrested in Lahore in 1939, a day after the war broke out, by the British as an enemy alien. This was despite the fact that Assad had refused German nationality after the annexation of Austria in 1938 and had insisted on retaining his Austrian citizenship. Assad spent three years in prison, while his family consisting of his wife, Manira, and son, Talal, after being released from detention earlier, lived under the protection of Chaudhry Niaz Ali Khan at the latter's vast 1,000-acre estate in Jamalpur, 5 km west of Pathankot. Assad was finally released and reunited with his family in Jamalpur when the Second World War ended in 1945. Topic. Role in Pakistan movement Assad supported the idea of a separate Muslim state in India. After the independence of Pakistan on 14 August 1947, in recognition for his support for Pakistan, Assad was conferred full citizenship by Pakistan and appointed the director of the Department of Islamic Reconstruction by the Government of Pakistan, where he made recommendations on the drafting of Pakistan's first constitution. In 1949, Assad joined Pakistan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs as head of the Middle East Division and made efforts to strengthen Pakistan's ties with the Muslim states of the Middle East. In 1952, Assad was appointed as Pakistan's Minister Plenipotentiary to the United Nations in New York, a position that he relinquished in 1952 to write his autobiography Up to the Age of 32, The Road to Mecca. Topic. Career as a diplomat Assad contributed much to Pakistan's early political and cultural life but was shunned from the corridors of power. He served this country as the head of the Directorate of Islamic Reconstruction, Joint Secretary of the Middle East Division in Foreign Office, Minister Plenipotentiary to the United Nations and Organizer of the International Islamic Colloquium. If one delves into the archival material of these government departments, the role played by Assad for his beloved Pakistan can be dealt with in detail. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Marriage controversy and resignation. By chance, at a reception, Assad met Pola, an American of Polish origin who was destined to become his third wife. D. 2007. She was a young, beautiful and intelligent woman. He fell in love with her and when he came to know that she had already embraced Islam he decided to marry her, despite the difference of age and temperament. 
but under the rules of the Foreign Office, he was bound to get prior permission to marry a non-Pakistani national. He applied through the proper channels but the Governor General rejected his application. So, he submitted his resignation from the Foreign Service, divorced his Arabian wife Manira, D. 1978, and in the inspiring company of his new wife, he sat down and wrote his extraordinary The Road to Mecca. During his stay in Switzerland, Assad received a letter from the President of Pakistan, General Ayub Khan, who was a great admirer of his book named The Principles of State and Government in Islam 1961. In a subsequent exchange of letters, he proposed to Assad to come to Pakistan and have the membership of a seven-man group of Muslim scholars, who both supposedly knew the world and were experts on Islam, to advise him with regard to everyday matters as well as the drawing up of a new Islamic constitution for the country. At that time, Assad was immersed in his cherished work on the Quran, and so he regretfully declined. After many years, Assad was again invited by another president of Pakistan, General Zia ul Haq, in 1983 and that was his last visit to this country. When he arrived at Islamabad, which he had not yet seen, he was received at the plane with great honor and escorted to the presidency. During his sojourn in Islamabad, there was a series of meetings with members of the Ansari Commission in order to prepare a kind of program for the president for the future. Assad agreed with some, and as usual disagreed with others, which he found retrograde. On one point he was firm and insistent that Muslim women should have exactly the same rights in the political sphere as had men, to the extent of becoming prime minister. Assad also spared some time to meet with his surviving friends in Lahore and Islamabad and at the request of the president made several radio and television appearances, as always spontaneous. On his return, he was besieged by letters from literally hundreds of admirers in Pakistan, offering him land, a house, everything but he refused politely, as his concept of Pakistan was beyond all these worldly trivialities. <laughs> Later years and death Towards the end of his life, Assad moved to Spain and lived there with his third wife, Pola Hamida Assad, an American national of Polish Catholic descent who had also converted to Islam, until his death on 20 February 1992 at the age of 91. He was buried in the Muslim cemetery of Granada in the former Moorish province of Andalusia, Spain. Family. Assad had a son, Talal Assad, from his second Saudi Arabian wife, Manira. Talal Assad is now an anthropologist specializing in religious studies and postcolonialism. Assad also had a stepson named Heinrich, converted name Ahmad, with his first wife Else, converted name Aziza. Topic: <laughs> Honors and recognition. Muhammad Assad Platts In April 2008, a space in front of the Uno city in the 22nd district of Vienna was named Muhammad Assad Platz in honor of Muhammad Assad. The step was taken as part of a two-day program on the European Year of Intercultural Dialogue focusing on Islam and its relationship with Europe. The program commemorated the life and work of Assad, described as a great Austrian visionary, who earned international recognition by building bridges between religions. The honoree's son Talal Assad, the president of the Islamic community of Austria Annas Schakfe and Vienna's cultural advisor Andreas Malath Pokorny were present at the unveiling of the square. Malath Pokorny, while talking to the media said, there is probably no more appropriate place to honor Muhammad Assad than that in front of the UN city. Muhammad Assad was a citizen of the world, who was at home, and left his mark, everywhere in the world, especially in the Orient. Honorary postage stamp On 23 March 2013, Pakistan Post issued a stamp with denomination of 15 rupees under the Men of Letters series in honor of Allama Muhammad Assad. Topic Bibliography Topic Portrayals of Assad In movie documentaries 
A Road to Mecca, The Journey of Muhammad Asad and Articles Goldman, Shalom. Leopold Weiss, The Jew Who Helped Invent the Modern Islamic State. Tablet Online Magazine, July 1, 2016, in books Hassan, Pipip Ahmad Rafay The Political Thought of Muhammad Assad. Concordia University. Windhager, Gunther Leopold Weiss alias Muhammad Assad, von Galizian Naturabian 1900-1927 German. ISBN 978-3-205-99393-3. Butler Bowden, Tom 2005. Fifty Spiritual Classics, Timeless Wisdom from Fifty Great Books on Inner Discovery, Enlightenment and Purpose. London, Nicholas Brealey. ISBN 1-85788-349-7. Halilovich, Savit 2006. Islam i Zapad u Perspektivia Sadovog Mislinya in Bosnian. ISBN 978-9958-9229-2-3. Chagatai, M. Ikram Muhammad Assad, Europe's Gift to Islam. ISBN 978-969-35-1852-8. Andrabi, Abru Aman Muhammad Assad, His Contribution to Islamic Learning. ISBN 978-81-7898-589-3. Archived from the original on 13 May 2015. Retrieved 30 July 2013. Wolf, Michael 2007. One Thousand Roads to Mecca, Ten Centuries of Travelers Writing About the Muslim Pilgrimage. New York, Grove Press. ISBN 978-0-8021-3599-5. Sharif, M. A. 2009. Why an Islamic State, The Life Projects of Two Great European Muslims. ISBN 978-967-5062-39-1. Archived from the original on 25 July 2014. Retrieved 30 July 2013. Honjer, Tobias 2010. Muhammad Assad, a mediator between the Islamic and the Western world. ISBN 978-3-640-78219-2. Schlosser, Dominic Lebensgesetz und Vergemeinschaftensform, Muhammad Assad, 1900-1992, und sein Islamverstandni, German. ISBN 978-3-86893-182-2, in journal entries. Elma Ruth, Harder, 1998. Muhammad Assad and The Road to Mecca, text of Muhammad Assad's interview with Carl Gunter Simon. Islamic Studies. 37 4. ISSN 0578-8072. JSTOR 20837016. Nawab, Ismail Ibrahim 2000. A Matter of Love, Muhammad Assad and Islam. Islamic Studies. 39 155-231. ISSN 0578-8072. JSTOR 23076101. Hoffman, Murad 2000. Muhammad Assad, Europe's Gift to Islam. Islamic Studies. 39 233-247. ISSN 0578-8072. JSTOR 23076102. Literary works by Assad Topic. Books Unromantisches Morgenland, aus dem Tagebuch einer Reise German, published under his former name Leopold Weiss. The book is a description of the Middle East, written before his conversion to Islam, for a German-speaking readership. The Unromantic Orient 2004, English translation by Elma Ruth Harder Islam at the Crossroads 1934, a call for Muslims to avoid imitating Western society and instead return to the original Islamic heritage, written in English The Road to Mecca 1954, autobiography covering his life from 1900 to 1932 The Principles of State and Government in Islam 1961, description of a democratic political system grounded in Islamic principles 
The Message of the Quran 1980, an influential translation and interpretation of the Quran Sahih al-Bukhari, The Early Years of Islam 1981, translation and explanation of an important collection of hadith reports of pronouncements by the Prophet Muhammad This Law of Ours and Other Essays 1987, collection of essays about Islamic law Homecoming of the Heart 1932-1992. Part 2 of The Road to Mecca 2016, Al Abbas International, ISBN 969-8460-41-1. Meditations unpublished, intended to clarify ambiguities arising from his translation The Message of the Quran 1980, stands unpublished as of 2013. The Spirit of Islam is not a separate book but a republication of the first chapter of his 1934 book Islam at the Crossroads. Journals <inaudible> 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 Arafat, A Monthly Critique of Muslim Thought 1946-47 Video interviews Muhammad Asad and Dr. Hathout on Ijihad Muhammad Asad, God-Man Relationship Other publications Topic Honors Lviv Islamic Cultural Center named after Muhammad Assad was officially opened. Topic See also List of converts to Islam, Contemporary Islamic philosophy, Islamic revival, This law of ours and other essays. The Principles of State and Government in Islam Pakistan Movement